Yes, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. This, uh, I have a few questions here, um, and I believe these would be best addressed uh, by the state, uh, Dr. Patrick, on these particular issues. Um, out of the new daily COVID positivity numbers, uh, how many are under the, the age of 18? Uh, we have a school-aged metric page on our website that I would love to uh, refer for everybody to. Um, it's at dph at dot illinois.gov forward slash COVID-19 forward slash school dash aged dash metrics. And then you can pull that up by county across the state. Um, and uh, so we were looking uh, most recently at uh, like the July statistics to see how that had been changing over time. Um, and so we were looking at it from five to 11 year olds as well uh, who are not eligible for vaccine yet. And so all of our efforts to try to protect them are to try to protect around them, 12 to 17 year olds who are eligible for vaccine. And then of course our college age students, um, 18 to 22. And what we've seen in the, the past month was that our um, percent increase in the five to seven or five to 11 year olds was 788%. Our 12 to 17 year olds had an increase in their case counts of 704%. And the 18 to 22 year olds had a 1,345% increase. So that is quite a lot of increase. Um, even during a non-school timeframe, um, we've definitely been chasing uh, camp related outbreaks all over the state all summer long, learning a lot from them. Um, and during this time, we're also looking at, you know, whether or not more severe disease is happening. And so we also looked at, you know, kids coming into the emergency department across the state um, and in the zero to zero, uh, nine year old age group um, during uh, the month of July, um, we saw a 192% increase in those ED visits. And in the 10 to 19 year olds, we saw a 391% increase in those ED visits. So we definitely know that kids are um, uh, getting COVID, that some of them do have uh, some more severe illness. And from some of our camp outbreak works, uh, we have a CDC team that has been on the ground with us working on a camp that then led to um, a conference of, of gentlemen who were associated with the same main organizing um, group, then back to that campgrounds and then into the communities where those campers came from, not necessarily the community where the camp was held. And we had over a thousand people that ended up being exposed just from kids having a good time at camp, coming in, not tested beforehand, not most not vaccinated and, um, and unfortunately no social distancing or masking. And so it really has had a, a big ripple effect um, into the community um, again, the communities from which those campers came from, not necessarily always the location where the camp is held. Okay, um, you quoted a lot of uh, percentage increases, but again, mm -hmm. out of the daily new COVID positivity numbers, how many are under the age of 18? Um, so I'm looking at that about 1,400, um, just under 1,500. Okay. In the of, July counts, in the July counts, so that would be averaged across the July. I don't have the daily in front of me. Okay, so we we are supplied daily um, daily numbers through the IDPH. Um, is there any numbers that show? So if you have three three thousand, two thousand people that test positive today for COVID, how many of those are under the age of eighteen? I don't have that number in front of me at, at this second. Okay. Would you be able to supply that to the committee? Yes, we could. Okay, that'd be fine. Follow up with a, with a, a day or two. Would that be okay enough time? That would be fine. Yep. And then also, could you supply the, the links to show the actual uh, figures as well, please? We'd be glad to provide you any information that we have. Wonderful. And out of these children that are that are under the age of 18, how many are testing positive for Delta? So... Let me describe a little bit. I Dr. Arwadi mentioned how that testing takes place. Um, so again, we have antigen testing and we have PCR testing as our main testing uh, pathways. And it takes the clinical remnant specimen from PCR testing to be able to actually sequence. Illinois is ahead of most states in, in sequencing about 10 and a half percent 
of all those PCR remnants because they have to be sent from that place of location to a lab that does that sequencing. Not every lab does that sequencing. Right now, IDPH is doing the majority of the sequencing for the state. Um, and so again, we're seeing about 10 and a half percent of all PCR remnants uh, specimens um, being sequenced. So of that smaller proportion of people who do get sequenced, um, CDC is reporting that we have about 55% of our specimens um, as Delta in Illinois at this time. There's a little bit of a time delay there. And what we're seeing in our own labs is, is even a higher percentage. And so we know Delta circulating. Um, gamma has not gone away entirely and Alpha have not gone away entirely. Um, but the idea is vaccination can work against any of these variants. And so we want to vaccinate and completely and complete the series of vaccination on everybody possible. Because even though we've done a great job on vaccination, we still have about 6 million people yet to vaccinate in the state. Okay, so you said 10% are checked and of that 55% are verified to be Delta under uh, the age it, of 18. No, I'm sorry, that's, as, that's statewide all ages. Um, okay. Our camp outbreaks have disproportionately been able to sample um, kids who are under 18 because those are the people who are going to camp, right? And so uh, we actually have a higher percentage of youth who are being sequenced, of, or, so youth are the ones who are being sequenced and they do have Delta. So again, and it's not just camps, we've also had youth go to sporting events in, um, in other states and come back with Delta. We've had um, transmission within communities um, within with youth and Delta. So one of the things that we would hope that your committee can help us with is there are small rural hospitals that don't have access to dry ice, which is a needed item in order to uh, submit one of those clinical remnant specimens to the state labs so that we can sequence it. And uh, just a few more questions and thank you for your time. Um, how many uh, kids under the age of 18 uh, in Illinois are hospitalized right now? I don't have that number for the whole state and the, at this moment. And the reason for that is in order to get any demographic data on who is hospitalized, we have to match a variety of different data sets together in order to have that information statewide um, when it's outside of one hospital system or another. But I think that we do have representatives from panel two who are representing hospitals that mm -hmm. might be able to give you some of their experience um, in terms of who's hospitalized in their facilities. Are you able to get that information to show the hospitalization rate amongst children under the age of 18 or school age children? Uh, it goes by decades. And so we would be able to look at under 20. Okay, okay. Would you be able to supply that again in the next few days of under the age of 20, how many are hospitalized in the state of Illinois? I will look at that data set to be able to see what we can pull from that for you. Wonderful. And then if you're able to get that by region as well, that would be very much appreciated. We don't do the hospitalized data link um, a region to region, um, but I can give you a statewide Thank view you. of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And lastly, I just have just one more okay. question. Um, okay. You know, at the beginning of this uh, pandemic, we, we, had, uh, we had seen that you know, that school age children, um, you know, were not uh, necessarily susceptible uh, to severities of, of COVID-19. Is there any new data or science that clearly, and I say this specifically, clearly shows school age kids are, uh, are now at a, an increased uh, risk uh, from COVID-19? I think that you have to look at two things to answer that question. One is, any person under 12 can't get vaccinated and therefore they're as naive to this virus as any possible population. And so in order to protect them, we still feel that we need to vaccinate around them and to make sure that they have less likelihood of getting exposed. That, that's one point. Um, the other point is that we know that um, kids can transmit to others. And again, I, I raised the issue about these camp outbreaks. So in the thousand of people that, that ended up being part of that chain of exposure from kids who came home um, from camp, 
we did see hospitalizations um, and some very severe illness in the people that they exposed. And so even if a child is not going into the hospital, it does not mean that that child's uh, member at their church or household or visiting a grandparent uh, wouldn't be exposed and, and have very severe illness. And I think we can't just pull the kids out and ignore the fact that severe illness can happen to others as well. And that kid doesn't have any other way to protect those family members. And so it's really important to do what we can to try to vaccinate and to try to help kids from getting uh, COVID-19 um, at, at this point. Okay. Thank you very much. And that, that would go back to, you know, we're we're here to have a targeted approach, in my opinion, uh, when it comes to COVID-19 mitigation standards and the children are least susceptible uh, to this particular uh, pandemic. We've got a high rate of uh, vaccination rates among 65 and older, so we are having that targeted approach. So when I look at all of this, uh, this data and when I have these conversations and I see the CDC guidance is recommended, and I see the IDPH having guidance is recommended um, that uh, the local control is uh, universally what, uh, what's being recommended here. It is uh, greatly concerning to me that we have a governor that believes he can eat it to the entire state, a universal mass mandate. So thank you very much for your time. And I really appreciate you being with us here today.